for ways of letting go. So that actually how has we work, and when the resonance hear this, again they were really surprised. How ya? In reason you have to do tough, but they take it real easy in the hotel in Australia. They said they never get us to work that hard. They said, and then then you have your lunch. Yes, we have our lunch. Many of you have been to our monastery. We eat. It out of a bowl, every finger in one mouth. Sometimes it's too you do get curry on spaghetti. No, sorry, I got that wrong. You got custa on spaghetti. That's right. You ever has custa on spaghetti? Why you don't say yet for? You never eating it, but actually you right. Is it cross? Sometimes you have custard on spaghetti. I has ice cream on curry, chocolate ice cream. Yeah, that's also yucky. How you know? You put it in your bowl, and for me because I'm a senior monk. I put it in the bowl myself, and I give it to somebody to take up. How does they dusty? By the time they not really careful, they just like it's on over the place. You know, I put it in the right position when I start. By the time it gets up there, it's all over the flavors that life. And this was saying that even in prison, even when you chew sobriety, you get a tray. The custard in here, the spaghetti in over there, is separate. Combustion? Don't you have combustions you in your pole? Have a look at our post. We don't have suppressed compartments. It's go on over the flame. They said that's disgusting. So what you do in the afternoon? He says we meditate. Yeah, he says we meditate. Can't your shorts off play some music or? Sauce play a game or footy on something? No, we not allowed to play footy. We just meditate on afternoon. They says, "Don't you get spoiled?" No, that's what was supposed to do. So I suppose you hands girls for dinner. Dinner? We don't have dinner. In our monasteries, we just eat in the morning time. There are no 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 dinner. They said, "Well, even in prison, they gave you something to eat in the evening, and you have snacked throughout the world, the day, whatever you want. So, what do you do in the evening then?" You know, can you play cards, play Monopoly or something? But at the time, he said, "No, we can't do that. Don't tell us." They said, "You meditate, don't you?" Yeah, of course, Guido. Oh God, that must be terrible. That's what time do you go to bed? And the monk says, "Bed, bed. We don't have bed. I sleep on the floor." They were absolutely disgusted. Even in recent, they bust you in that little cot 
with the much stress on top. Not in our monastery, I sleep on the floor. Anyways, the rishonas were actually really surprised. They were really surprised, but not only surprised, they felt sorry for this monk who has been visiting them. And this is true story. Once of them were so obsessed that this man who, le- who they got to like were living in shirt, a hot situation, one of them blood doubt. That's terrible in your monetary. Why don't you come in here and stay with us instead? And they had a point. It is actually much more comfortable in any prison in Western Australia than in body in the Nam Monastery or even in Damansara Nuns Monastery. So, why is this what people are trying to get out of town and they are trying to break into our monastery to stay there? Waiting late. That's got me thinking. What's the difference between our monetary and the reason? Reason is actually more comfortable. The monetary is much harsher. What's the difference? The only difference is in the monetary people want to be there. In a reason, don't matter how comfortable it is. People don't want to be there. That's the only difference. From that I walk it out. There are many prisons in life. I saw the many prisons I made for myself. The many prisons that all the people continue to make for themselves and play you don't want to be. That's your reason. If you don't like it to talk and think, when it's gonna end, this one is your reason. You don't wanna be here, and you in a relationship with your don't like your relationship in your reason, and you don't wanna to be there. If you in a top, with not giving your any satisfaction, another reason for you. Even a body quit is a sick. And you don't want to be here. Your body is now a reason. Any place you don't want to be a reason. However, there a very easy way to escape from the reasons you must in life. You don't need to turn your husband, your, your wife. You don't need to even turn your job. You don't ever need to get better with your sickness. All you need to do is to turn your attitude and want to be here. When you want to be here, you breathe. This is the short of how painful, uncomfortable is this. As long as you want to be here, then you freeze. That's called it contentment. That's the second way of letting go. Want to be here, whatever here happen to be. That's one of the most powerful attitudes, especially when you're meditating and also all the time in your life. When, when your meditation is the master, what you're experiencing, you can be doing. Sleepy, restless, thinking or short of various things in your head. But if you want to be here, you feel peace and freedom. If you want to be somewhere else, you only feel this tension and suffering. This great just is, you don't need to change anything except your attitude and want to be here. Not only when you're meditating, 
there are many all the time in your life. So you stuck in a traffic jam. You got no choice. It's not gonna move faster because you get angry. So when you stuck in the traffic jam, want to be there, and if you want to be here, it's how you no stress at all. You feel perfectly free and as easy to peace in the traffic jam of your life. When you want to go somewhere and you can't, the only thing that stress is, is I want to be somewhere else. I don't want to be here. Just like a prison. If you want to be here, you freeze. There come a time when you dying. You're sick and in pain. And I see so many people stronger at that time, and it's so sad and that's but great to see. So when that's you in your last moment of life, just on the struggle, it's not going to get you anywhere. They know escape. You're dying, so don't mess a prison of your body as the very end instead want to be there if you want to be there you totally free that's the second way of letting go want to be here the order the third way of letting go this all come from the dhamma chakka bhavatana sutta the third noble church the boost that says letting go of striving less to enlightenment. I already mentioned two of the ways he said to let go. The third way of letting go is called it giving. Not ordinary giving, but giving and betting nothing back in return. In this horn here, this horn has been pure for a long time, they no shy. Saying, who gave this? They no name of the donor of this place. Even in our retreat center, we caught over five million. Many people don't ask many, many small sums and big sums, but they not even one shy in that retreat center opposite our monetary of who get what. There a reason well for that, because we encourage giving a better nothing but in return. If you give donation as as better to have your name inscribed over the entrance of that horn which you donate, that's not called it giving, that's called it buying as vestition rights. Selling your name, that's not real giving. So for us, the way boost that describes it is giving especially nothing but in return. So what does that mean? You letting go. When you get married and have a relationship, are you giving or are you expecting something back in return? Are you really letting go? Too often we expect things back in return. And that's called a hurt, a now of suffering in life. And our expectation never gets relied. You find that much of your life is expectation be unfrustrated be in what and the the thing that was reminded to you when you were young which are as best from life how many of them have you reached and got mostly very few when you get married when you get your top when you get out in the workplace, when you go to traveling, 
you have so many expectations and the more expectations you have the less you can enjoy the cheese which is your relationship or your life if you can go into your relationship giving a best in nothing as on see what happens you get a hurt amount of fulfillment even when you meditate those people who meditate as better to get something they're the ones who call on the problem if you want to get enlightened if you want to get peace or if you want to get the rid of you your cancer if you do in it to expect something there's never pee any pee for you that's why again what Ajanta he used to say you meditate not to get something not to attend for you meditate to let go it's an art of giving expressing nothing back in return us empty of letting go it's a beautiful way of living life whenever i give any talk i don't expect anything but in return and usually i don't get anything you know even this evening not the right cup of tea i don't expect is any way who cares so whenever you do anything you don't accept anything back sometimes people get quite surprised at that that's what somebody ran me up once from here it was a police lady actually i remember her and she ran me up and said are you giving a talk tonight i said yeah i given a talk tonight here in this center she said how much do you have to pay to get in i said nothing you don't have to pay anything to get in you all know that and she stopped this white and she said you don't understand me how much money do you have to pay to get out the doors i said madam you don't have to give any money to go down the door you just come in and listen if you don't like it you go out again then she paused again she said listen how much dollar and cent do i have to cost up to come listen to your talks i said madam you don't have to cost up anything you don't have to pay any money to go in you don't have to pay any money to go out we don't give you short of brush gestures and rubber gander you know we put us your you money effort was it totally for free just come in and listen and you go out again afterwards and then she paused i always remember this pause because i knew that she was really surprised and then she asked with us most sincerity well what do you guys get out of it then she couldn't believe that you can do something as best in nothing back in return you just give that becomes just a beautiful way of living up life just to give as best in absolutely nothing back in return why because it's just a toy to give i think i mentioned a few weeks ago here every morning when i have in my breakfast the cats come up to steal my milk so you know usually i got enough but sometimes i go without as let i have half is this up who with i usually have so the cast so i get to the cat 
So I guess anything best in return for the cast? No, like eating, sneeze and go away. Never say thank you. Not even a meal from the cast. You know what cast I like so proud. But anyway, who can whether the cat lets me pass is or struck is or whatever. I don't care. I just love giving. So actually, you don't give as best to nothing best in return. You give to your cat and dog and another people. Sometimes mothers give to their kids. They just want to give. They're not thinking of getting anything back in return. That's a beautiful way of letting go. So why don't you give to life? Give on your kindness, your love, your energy to life. At best, not back in return. And then you know what letting go is, and what the spiritual life is on a par. It's not what I'm getting out of this. It's what I can give. As a call, I, I give in my whole life to this. That's why I saw it not materially. But what happiness and health and peace. That's become the best way of letting go, giving, giving to your partner, not expecting any back in returns. Giving to lie, not expecting anything back to, to return. Giving all your energy to this moment, expecting nothing back. It's called it the best way of letting go. Just know, a best day chance. When you have no expectation, life become too interesting. You not demanding anything, just like give you so much. It usually gives you what you least expect. You have much more fun that way. You don't anticipate things. On the gifts of life come to as a real surprise. I never expect that isn't that wonderful. Life becomes far more enjoyable that way. And the fourth way of letting go is called having the Teflon mind. When nothing stick to it. So you have this beautiful appearance now. You do, don't try and taste not and try and remember what's being said so you can make sure you act this way in the future so you can be a better human being. You don't need to try and remember their things. Their things will stick in your mind anyway. So don't try and collect things or allow things to stick to you. You have this beautiful moment. Enjoy it now, knowing it's gonna go, so you can be free for the next moment to come. Then let's that go too. And on the happiness, and the unhappiness of life never stick up you, which means that you can always be free for the next moment, not allowing the last moment influenced this one, you just flow through life. And again, collecting no me mementos, at best in nothing for the future. Someone says something wrong to you. It's just go right to you. As I say, why we have to ears? If you look very carefully, you say in. The others say out. So that's why we don't need to keep anything. That's why all of the even the happy moments we can let them go too. Because be careful if you keep the happy moments. 
Let's give you so much appetition, so much comparisons. It means you can enjoy the next moment. How to let go of all the moments, happy and sad moments of the bad. So, you got this mind, this body, this life to which nothing stick, which means you can only enjoy whatever happiness that not allowing the past to stop you being in re in the reason. And that's especially good with on you knowledge and understanding. Sometimes we, when we learn something, it stick to us, and it makes us so. If you don't mind saying, concept which we call cannot face the really of the recent moments. People with too much knowledge can never understand the twist up now. That's why again, one of my other favorite saying is never allow knowledge to stand in the way of truth. Never allow knowledge to stand in the way of truth. Knowledge is on that you learn it, on you expect to be. Which means when you expect something to be, when you know what is on the power, it means then that block you from seeing the truth and universeness of what's happening right now. And too many people even know too much about Buddhism, so they can never understand it. They can never understand the truth of this moment, what actually happening right now. They can never be as peer with this moment. They can never be free. They can never have real happiness so much that what's happened to them in their life. Why? Because they always allow their knowledge to stand in the way of the truth. So remember, all the knowledge are just the sideboards. It's just the directions. It's not the real thing. The last similar. And it's all smile, but a real one. To understand what I mean by not allowing knowledge to stand in a way of truth. This was one of professor of philosophy here in birth. Yeah, the appearance important. Which we are now going to see with a smile of the professor and our appearance is but when it's interpreted from the knowledge of your part. In other words, you test the appearance and you compare with something else, which means it's become limited by the part. To learn the world and truly stand in the way of truth. That's why that's in meditation we learn how to be absolutely quiet, to feel and to know. That become the truth. In the same way that the student of Lao Tzu could actually see, didn't see the senses, only saw the world. And that three toys master makes a very good command. That is either person. If they wanted to see the senses, they go to burst aside on the world. Descriptions, the words, actually block the appearance that's the okay back to the professor. There were a professor who of philosophy in the university. Whenever you mention a professor in philosophy in Buddhism, they only guess a bad trap. So, if there are many professors over here, I do apologize 
is just our tradition. But this professor of philosophy, he felt that there was a few five-star restaurant of a new birth, and he wanted to go there to test out the food. So he met an appointment he rented. There was a two-month wait list. That's how popular the restaurant was, and so two months waiting list. He decided to book his flight there anyway, and when he booked his flight there, two months later, he walked up at the restaurant and. Of course, they wanted to see his ID to make sure he really booked a flight, and so they checked his ID, and yes, he was booked, booked it. So he went in. The manager took him to his table. He sat down at the table and waited for him. You know they're really well dressed waiters, and guessed him the menu, and this menu was in this basement, and the menu was written in gold leather and coloured raffi. Even the menu was a work of art, as you would expect in an expensive restaurant. This is no fish and chips shop. Is it a top-class five-star restaurant? So he looked at the menu, and then he ate the menu, and then he passed and left, because the professor had no idea of the difference between the menu and the food. Do you get it? Too often the menu is one knowledge, and the food what you eat. Is the appearance which is sorry I said never allow knowledge to stand in the way of the truth. So we let's go off on that. Cause too many people say, but the Buddha said, but Jesus said, but the experts say, but the government says, or whatever. So what? It interesting, you know, maybe short up. Pointing you in the right direction. That's what they says. But what did this day mean? Where was they pointing to? And that's the appearance which you have. So by having a Teflon mind, you become this beautiful free mind, which can actually see things as they are rather than see things. As your told us there, so learn how to be free. It's all the ways of letting go. A little things I was telling people at the retreat that some I told the story, an example of this. In the nice years that I was living in North Thailand, this was a place where Western culture has not reached the country. So proud in Thailand has been. Colonized, but Thailand has escaped, and whatever Western Mers went into Thailand, they were on in Bangkok, some in Chiang Mai. But the past of Thailand, I was in no Westerner has been there, and this is not a centuration. I went to some villas in the Das Play. And I was the first Westerner the Velasquez has seen. I remember one occasion going on trial in the morning, and I was the first white man they seen in the Velasquez. And so they were putting food in my bowls, and it's a peace bowl. And but they were looking at me, and all the food were falling outside.
The dogs were eating us on. Thank you very much because I was the first witness they saw. But because of that, it was like an indigenous culture which has not been entrenched by the wet, and it was fascinating observed that's from inside because I was a monk. As a monk, you weren't some sort of fishister. You had a flay in that of your hierarchy. You were in the midst of that of your hierarchy. You were not an outsider, so you were twisted like a tie. You were a pest to be half like a tie. And soon you became like a tie. You saw it with tight eyes, and once often you saw was totally. You expected what I was saying at the retreat was in down nice year. The monastery I was staying most of the time were a Ramesian crowd. So on the. Villas tourists in the lodge on the rear use the last play for the funerals, so we do the funerals. We see on the villas tourists they come bring their dead. We do on the twenty and the service. We see them that afternoon, that evening, the next day, and that was something very strange. They were not grief; they just didn't cry. Not just cry; they weren't even sad when somebody died. That was not suppressing the grief because you saw them every day. They just weren't there. It's what killed her. In which grief was absent. And that really shocked me. And I was there nice year, so this was no just shock visit, and I thought that was impossible because my learning has said that when you love someone, you love, you have to have breath. The church of the master. There were no risks there. Can you see? And sometimes people say that's impossible. It's where there. Can you see how people they can see the truth because their learning never allow your learning to block the truth. So a lot of time we have to let go, even our learning and our、uh, assumptions. In order to see the truth, and that's happens what I call this Teflon mind. Otherwise, you have all the assumptions of who you husband's husband is, who your enemies are, who your friends are, what life. Is on the power, and that will block you seeing what you really out there. And life is totally surprising, as less as far as I'm、um, concerned. That's I seen in my life. Even like Indonesia, my trip to Indonesia. That's where on the Muslim terror terrorists. Or you know, on the Polish bomber, they came from over there. But I had such a wonderful time with the Muslims. They came to on my tours. We had photo together, but interviews and for photographs in the Muslim newspapers. Even one Muslim family, they came to airport. They just caught me in time. Say, say, oh, I turn from, I turn from. You must shine our book. It's a bad book. 
we ever had. So, this whole Muslim family in the field and everything me in the midst though with the book. Having a last photograph taken together is that's wonderful. When people of different religions can have so much fun together, did you express that? That's what the truth. So as a lot, a lot of the time when we think, all oh, Muslim they don't like Buddhists. That actually what stop us seeing the truth. So remember, just have a Teflon mind. Don't allow their faith to stick, cause they stop you from appearing the truth. So there are four ways of letting go. And those four ways again are just throwing things away. I'm not talking about throwing your mental real growth possession away, but throwing the mental stuff with your you keep the bus and the filters worry about the filter and all this all the stuff which you worry about throughout is down. And be simple and be free. Have a few possession don't carry too many rock in the best bag on top of your mind. And number two is learning how to be concerned. It's a wonderful having mobile phones. Isn't that wonderful? So be concerned that it's ringing. How it's gonna ring anyway? You can't do anything about it. So be happy to be here. A truly very nice music stands to you so much. It's very great that that monk hear music, you know, because we're not allowed to hear music. So it's very wonderful to hear this. Thank you so much. So be concerned and happy no matter what happening. Number three. If actually whatever you do, just give appearance a best thing, nothing back in return. So I don't expect things, so I don't expect anything back. So what whether so you like the talk that's your problem. I just given my talk. I don't my duty and that's it. So I don't expect anything back in return. I just give how I love giving. I love teaching. I love serving. I love being kind and seeing what you need next. So that's my joy. So thank you for giving me a chance to date. That's all I need. Nothing back in return. And that's beautiful cow, then you free with no expectations. And last up on, have a Teflon mind with nothing stick. So don't keep things especially in your doubt, even your knowledge so you can be free. And then you understand what letting go is. And if you can do that from time to time in your life, you find the most of the problem of life you can overcome. There are times when you work hard, when you care things, you do your duty and jobs. There had to be the time when you just busting down and let go. The problem is as Westerners living in the Western world or as ASEANs living in the Western world, we all know about doing things. We're very good at that, but what we don't know is how to burst things down, let's go, and rest. So that's how to let's go, the four ways of letting go. Thank you for listening. Thank you, you know, I never expected that. <laughs>